The United States infrastructure is in terrible shape, particularly the nation's roads. The American Society of Civil Engineers estimates that 32% of America's major roads are in poor or mediocre condition, and that immediately the nation's annual investment in roads alone must be drastically increased to $170 billion per year. Here we'll shine a spotlight on an issue which has been overlooked or ignored by government officials for decades, and which the general public is totally unaware, yet is one of the most expensive and unnecessary waste of taxpayer money. Overweight trucks. And not just overweight, but grossly overweight trucks. Exceeding weight regulation limits by tens of thousands of pounds, inflicting over 700% more damage to the roads they drive on resulting in roads all over the nation requiring repair at a far greater frequency than they would otherwise. Seriously addressing this problem that plagues our roads is long overdue and can save American taxpayers hundreds of billions. First, let's look at the weight loss. In the early 1900s, vehicle weight regulations were left completely to the individual states. But even into the 1950s, the states couldn't agree to uniform standards, and there were wide and inconsistent variations from one state to the next. So in 1956, the federal government began regulating vehicle weights on federal highways, introducing uniform weight standards to the country for the first time. After years of further research, these federal regulations were expanded in 1974 with the federal bridge formula, which is still in use today. These federal regulations limit the weight on any single axle to 20,000 pounds, and the total gross weight on a truck or any group of axles on the truck is limited according to the formula which is based on the number of axles and the distance from the first axle to the last, essentially allowing a truck to be heavier when there are more axles and or there is more distance to spread its weight out. This tractor semi-trailer is like the typical truck making long haul trips on the interstate system. And in accordance with the federal regulations, it can weigh 80,000 pounds gross weight. Tandem axles are limited to 34,000 pounds and it has two pair, leaving 12,000 pounds on the front steer axle. As you might expect, shorter trucks like this dump truck, this garbage truck, and this concrete truck are limited to much lower gross weight by the federal bridge formula. With this axle spacing, which is common for all three of these truck types, each is allowed 51,000 pounds total weight. And comparing their allowable weights to the semi-trailer, the results of the federal bridge formula make sense. Shorter trucks with fewer axles have lower weight limits to protect roads and bridges. But while the federal bridge formula is entirely logical, utterly illogical is the fact that today, over 40 years later, a great number of commercial trucks on our roads exceed its limits by shocking and destructive amounts. Some in violation of the weight laws due to lack of enforcement and punishment, but in many cases because old state laws, most written decades ago, completely allow it. You see, the federal weight regulations apply to the federal highway system but over 95% of the nation's roads are actually state and local roads and are therefore still regulated by the individual states. And still today, there are wide and inconsistent variations from one state to the next, and many state weight limits exceed the federal bridge formula limits. And while it certainly seems irrational for there to be no uniform standard coast to coast to this day, digging further into the state laws, you'll find old grandfather rights and special exemptions, many of which seem downright insane. For examples, we can go back to these short three-axle trucks. All three are granted special exemptions in various states. Garbage trucks alone have exemptions in 28 states. All special exemptions allow the trucks to greatly exceed federal and state weight limits. And in some states, these trucks are exempt without any limits whatsoever. So that 80,000 pounds gross weight, with over 50,000 pounds on the tandem axles, which is very possible with these trucks, is completely allowed by state law. But while the special exemptions insanely allow trucks to carry absurd weights like this by law, today essentially every truck on every state and local road is in effect exempt. Because weight law enforcement is virtually non-existent, and the punishment for violations are typically so minuscule they're laughable. So all over the nation, grossly overweight trucks like these are running rampant, and the additional damage they're inflicting on the roads is even more severe than you might think. To measure the pavement damage caused by vehicles, we use the Equivalent Consumption Factor, or ECF, recently developed in a 2012 University of Texas study, which is based on the tried and true premise that the damage caused increases exponentially with increased axle weight. And when loaded to the maximum allowed by federal regulations, these trucks each have a total ECF value of 4.1, 
while when grossly overweight like this, each has a total ECF value of 31.6. What this means is that these overloaded trucks do 770% more damage to the pavement by being overloaded. 770% more. To put it another way, just one of these trucks overloaded like this consumes the road at a higher rate than seven similar trucks that aren't overloaded. This truck does more damage than all of these trucks combined. The most common trucks on the road are far more likely to be overloaded than not, even when they don't have a special exemption in their state. With the combination of weak enforcement with weak punishments, common sense will tell you that trucks everywhere are overloading because it's simply good business to do so. A dump truck like this is limited to 51,000 pounds by the federal bridge law. But by overloading to 80,000 pounds, the truck owner can deliver 29,000 pounds or 14 and a half tons more payload. If we conservatively figure the owner will make $5 per ton of payload, that comes to $72.50 in additional earnings every time the truck hauls overloaded. These trucks can make six deliveries a day and with 20 working days a month, that comes to $8,700 per month in additional income by cheating the system and running overloaded. And with enforcement practically non-existent, the truck may get caught once or twice a year. And when caught, the penalty will be maybe a $1,000 fine. So by running overloaded, the truck owner can make over $100,000 in additional income in a year, and the risk is maybe $2,000. It's an easy bet, a no-brainer, a guaranteed win for the truck owner while American taxpayers cover the damages. And making the matter even more disgusting is the fact that most trucks can add equipment that significantly increases their allowable weight by the federal bridge formula, while often actually decreasing the damage they do to the roads. Auxiliary axles have been around for 30 plus years, with the technology continually improving. These axles are readily available as aftermarket equipment and can be added to virtually any truck. As we've shown, distributing the vehicle's weight to more axles allows it to carry more under the federal bridge formula. And trailing axles like these spread the weight over a greater distance as well. And by equipping these trucks as shown, their weight allowances are greatly increased. The loading on the auxiliary axles is adjustable, which adds flexibility for variable loads and allows for optimal weight distribution to all the truck's axles. And with typical loading of the axles, the ECF values for these trucks is even lower than before when they could carry only 51,000 pounds. There's simply no good reason for trucks to run overweight and blatantly destroy the pavement on streets and highways. This seven axle dump truck can weigh 80,000 pounds by the federal bridge formula. And this one, which is equipped with six auxiliary axles and nine total, can weigh 95,000 pounds. And even at 95,000 pounds, its ECF value is only 3.9 with its typical axle loading. So a properly equipped truck can result in less road damage even at nearly twice the gross weight. Which further magnifies how unacceptable these atrocities are. The good news is the solution to this unnecessary and wasteful burden of overweight trucks is much simpler than it may seem. First, uniform vehicle weight regulations on every public road across the country. This will simplify the laws and make for easier compliance and easier enforcement. This will include eliminating all state grandfather rights, which should have been phased out 20 years ago anyway, and eliminating special exemptions. Second, the punishment for weight law violators must be increased significantly. Rather than minuscule fine amounts that are dwarfed by the profits gained committing the violation, the fine amount should act as a true deterrent that eliminates repeat offenders. For example, a fine amount of $1 per pound overweight would wipe out the profitability of violating the weight laws, which is the only sure way to stop the behavior. And such an increase in fines will naturally increase enforcement, as the fines can then fund weighing equipment and enforcement costs while making the task of weighing trucks worthwhile for the officer in his or her department. This is truly a common sense solution. Vehicle weight regulation, uniformity, and enforcement were important issues to the Reagan administration. The Surface Transportation Assistance Act of 1982 required the states to enforce the federal regulations on federal highways or else lose federal highway funding, which was extremely effective. And Reagan strongly encouraged nationwide uniformity at the state level as well, successfully convincing several states to adopt the federal regulations statewide while he was in office. However, no president since has understood the magnitude and expense of this problem. 
which has resulted in virtually no progress on that front since he left office. But today, with the new Trump administration focused not only on eliminating wasteful government spending, but rebuilding the nation's infrastructure as well, perhaps this decades-long plague of overweight trucks will finally meet its end.